back in 1966, the Americans put their stamp on the famous Le Mans, finishing first, second and third. And so did New Zealanders. The winning Ford GT40 was driven by Bruce McLaren and Chris Amon. The most recent assault on an endurance race by a New Zealand team has its beginnings among a group of enthusiasts who compete in the Honda Cup Series. Team leader Alan Stewart drew together five fellow rivals who had formed a friendship over recent years. Carrying on the proud history of New Zealand motor racing, this team grabs the opportunity to compete for victory in the 25 Hours of Thunder Hill race which takes place in Willows, Northern California. In advance of the team's arrival, preparations are well underway. Well, when we, we started the project about six months ago, and uh, we knew that the Spoon car was for sale, so Alan, uh, Alan Stewart put a team together. We bought the car, three of us bought the car, Alan Stewart, Tim Pollard and myself. And then, then we went through the logistics of getting the car set up in LA through um, Jeff Owen, he set the car up, and we got all the people together. And then we sent uh, Alan come up with Tim earlier about two months ago, checked the car out, did a test, did some work on it. Then before we come up, Alan and Noel Anderson, which is our chief mechanic in New Zealand, they come up and spent 200 hours setting the car up. Thunder Hill grew from its beginnings as a brief six-hour event into an endurance race which is one of the world's longest. But this endurance version, which now attracts an international field of more than 80 cars, came about through spur-of-the-moment circumstances. 25 Hours of Thunder Hill owes its origins to... Drinking. <laughs> Seriously. We had, uh, in 2002, we had finished our, I think it was our fifth 12-hour, and we went to an awards banquet that we had in town, and we were just so bored with the, the 12 hours, so easy to, to do. I thought, well, it's time to make this a 24-hour, and then on my way up to the podium to announce it, actually after a couple of cocktails, I decided, what the hell, let's make it 25. Um, I didn't even bother to ask the track, which I probably should have, but uh, it was just kind of born on that spot. And so our first one was 2003. It's possible we can have a car or two drop out and crash. We're hoping they're going to stay in there. Um, we hope to, to make an 82 car field, which would beat the, the largest field at Daytona. You know, I've seen a lot of teams put a lot of effort into, you know, year after year, they put a lot of effort into performance, whereas I think they should be uh, concentrating on keeping the car out on track, keeping uh, the lap times consistent, not necessarily their fastest, and saving their equipment and staying out of trouble, not, uh, not crashing into someone and, and watch out for themselves so they don't get crashed out. In Los Angeles, the team now concentrates on final arrangements. This is the first opportunity for the team to gather as a unit, to meet with USA team members, and familiarize themselves with the car. I think this, is, this will be the first time that the drivers will have competed as a team, which means they're competing together rather than competing against each other. So it's important that there, that there isn't any uh, rivalry amongst the team to set fastest lap times, which is also likely to be destructive for the car. I think you'll find that it will be repeated over and over again to, uh, to all the drivers because by nature they're all competitive uh, and in a normal race situation the first thing you do you go out and qualify at the start of the day and everybody wants to set the, fast, the fastest lap time so uh, the process you'd use in an endurance race is that in the initial driver training uh, the crew chief will probably pick a target time uh, and I think at Thunder Hill it could be two minutes and three seconds and uh, you know the, the drivers are expected to, to try and achieve that time uh, but not but not to go under it and if, the, if a driver can't achieve the time it's more important he stays in his comfort zone uh, where he's driving within himself rather than having to push the car because the rate of wear and the chance of damage escalates hugely just to squeeze an extra second a lap out of the car. The team prepares to load up for the 500 mile journey to the Thunder Hill racetrack Covering just about any contingency, they take a complete replacement engine and transmission together with key suspension components and several sets of wheels and tyres. Truck driver Eugene is one of the Americans, mostly volunteers, who would provide expert support to the Kiwis over the entire four days at Thunder Hill. The team heads from Los Angeles northwards to the racetrack situated in the rural town of Willows, just north of Sacramento. The organization is awesome. It's better than any other team I've, I've ever worked with or helped out. The New Zealand team is one of the first to arrive at the racetrack. By early morning, there would be more than 75 teams converging on Thunder Hill from across the USA and beyond. 
Yeah, we've already had a walk off nope. the track, we've so we're pretty happy. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I'm the fastest. Let's walk in. But the thing is, if you yeah, if you do go off to some true. areas, there's oh, some there's some irrigation yeah, ditches, yeah, and those irrigation ditches, if you went through them at high speed, you'll flip your car. Mo. So you, you don't go off Could inside the track. <laughs> This is a highly developed race car. It was campaigned by Spoon Sports of Japan in 25 hours of Thunderhill in 2009. Featuring several carbon fibre body panels, this car is deceptively quick. But it's just nice to be here and get the car out and start getting everything organised, so it's pretty great. Amid the ever increasing impressive lineup of competitors, the Kiwis get themselves established. Jonathan Merris has volunteered as driver coach. He prepares the team for the daunting test of endurance that lies ahead. And, uh, turn one, we went over yesterday. You want to apex it late, exit wide. Turn two, you want to come about about a car and a half from the right, and you're going to gradually come in this way. You should probably apex around here, and by this point, you're pretty much at wide open throttle, and you're opening up. And you're going to exit, you're going to track out wide here, and then you use a little of the curbing if you want. Um, but you got to understand when you're a wide open doll, you're going to have to, it'll carry you wide, you're going to set up for turn three. But you don't want to go wide here, like we talked about, you want to go about a car, car length in this way. And then once you get to the first third of this turn, you're going to be hugging this turn all the way through. At the, at the exit of six, you're on it, wide open throttle, up shifting all the way through the gears. Turn seven is no problem. It's basically just a little pop in the steering wheel to the left. Turn eight is a tighter turn to turn seven. Everything's quick here. Hard on the brakes, late apex. Very important turn, 14 to 15, because it sets you up for the longest straight on the track. Now on 14, you want to exit late. And when, at the exit, you'll see, just like here, it's marked off on the, on the asphalt uh, with just striped lines. But you can go over that and it's a little rough it's kind of like shaved asphalt and they'll either have cones like tall cones or tires you can go as far out to exit to set yourself for 15 go as far out in apex 15 normally apex 15 normally and track out here everyone's keen to get out on the track but will the technical scrutineer approve the car for racing. Uh, so far it looks pretty good. That, the gaps back there are pretty typical for a fairly new build. NASA is very particular about that. He's happy. Now just a few final tweaks. I was invited to come here to uh, help out. This is a, a long hard race. It's one of the longest races in the world. And we have we have a great crew and I mean if, if I wanted to win with anybody it'd be with all the people we're here with now. Gear changes and just coming together, but she's understeering, could almost do with a bit more. So, do what we say, six down here, do that. We're probably the time around. Around. I mean, when you, when you ease off, she'll bite up again, but that's. Now, you know, I've changed the, changed the towing on the front wheels, it's only a that scope. I haven't told Richard we've done it. I don't think it'll make much difference. It won't, it won't feel oh, it. I us, I I never, hope, yeah. Hopefully it'll give us a, a, a little bit better turn. What I've got to do is Practice sessions run smoothly as Martin takes the wheel. Following his turn, it is Richard who heads out onto the track. Communicator Anthony stays in radio contact with Richard as he approaches the halfway point of the circuit at turn seven. Then radio contact is lost. There's been a serious incident at turn seven. Track marshals stop the race. Richard has crashed and there are fears for his safety. Rescue services set about extricating Richard from the car. Teammates fear the worst as Richard is flown to hospital. He 
took the previous turn a little bit too early, so it's somewhat of an early apex. And when that happens, after you exit, you're gonna come out a little bit off. The team anxiously awaits news of Richard's condition. Drivers Alan and Martin rush to the hospital. Meanwhile, the wrecked car is impounded. This car is pretty bent up. I don't, I don't expect it to be recoverable. The, uh, the chassis is pretty well racked. Uh, the whole rough structure has collapsed. The uh, cage has been compromised in many locations. The mechanics recover the in-car video footage and set about way, analyzing exactly what could possibly here. have gone wrong. He's too far over to the right. He's be way over, just like that car. See how this car is more to the left? He's too close. It just went wide too. I mean, entered too early. When you enter too early, you exit wide. Yeah, but he might have been enough. He's looking at his gun and changed the gear back off the gas and whatever and turned it around. But what he did by changing the gear, he'd even lost another fraction of a second. Yeah. And Plus, once you're in that higher gear, there's no way you can get out of it. Yeah, just look like that. But I hope he's okay. We'll let me go. So uh, I was behind the five car lengths. Yeah. Maybe turned in a little early, but two wheel tires off, and there's kind of a bump there. On, on, on the inside, he was. On the outside. So he, he just had an early apex, didn't hit the inside. Exited a little wide and got in the dirt there. And kind of there is an upside. Richard's injuries are minor, and he returns to the track. What's, what's particularly gutting for me is that uh, I came here with a real intention of being conservative and fully professional in in how I've driven um, looking at I can't remember but looking at the video I haven't seen the video yet but the guys tell me basically I made a mistake um, got out too wide um, on a normal track that will be punished with a spin here I spun and rolled the car four times um, because of the way that the height of the curbs and the type of the type of area that you spin off onto, it's soft and the car digs in, etc. So it was a harsh punishment for a, a, what, what I think is a small mistake. Um, but in general, I mean, the over, overwhelming emotion I've got is one of the. I, I was at the wheel when uh, the car was wrecked, and um, that that it's really let down the four of the drivers and um, the whole team and uh, not just you know two or three weeks of effort but probably a year of planning quite a lot of investment it, it, you know they, they tell me they may be able to rebuild the car which I really hope they can I gained my awareness again when I, when I was in the helicopter on the way to the hospital which was an interesting experience because um, it's a beautiful car and I'm just Gutted. I, I, the enormity of of, uh, of what's happened hasn't quite sunk in yet. I mean, I'm glad I'm I'm glad I'm uh, I'm glad I'm on two feet. I think the uh, I sit lying in the helicopter, and my first thought was, uh, are my hands and feet still there? Uh, my second thought was, my wife's going to be really pissed with me. And then my third third thought was, I've, I've let the guys down. And that's pretty much. It, in a nutshell, really, those, those thoughts and emotions evolve, but that's pretty much how I felt straight off and how I feel now. It's, look, it's not a big, it's a big deal, but it's, you're right, I forget, Martin said it, and um, Mauricio said it, we are a team and we did a whole lot of work and it just yeah. didn't quite work out. It's a bummer. Like Mauricio said, you know, the, the fact is that before, when we entered into this, we decided that we were a team. Yep. And there'd be no finger pointing. No. It could have happened to anyone. It could have happened to anybody. And, and the problem is, is that whoever it does happen to points the finger at themselves enough to make it, you know, you can't make a person yes. feel worse than that. You can just imagine how Richard feels right now. I mean, he's yeah. probably kicking himself in the ass. He yeah. will be. Yeah. But in the end, nobody's upset at him. Everybody's, of course, everybody's disappointed at, at the fact that we didn't get to race, but being disappointed is 
a bit different than being upset at the person that wrecked the vehicle. Yeah, if it was, if it was, if it was absolute stupidity. We'd... Before, Richard is probably the one ideal guy to have in the team next year because he knows exactly what, what, what we've been trying yeah, to impress on everyone yeah. since they got here. Yeah. Yeah. I wanna, you know what I actually do want to do? I want to have a glass of wine and I want to have a meal and a few laughs and then I'm going to throw myself on the bed and cry. <laughs> Talked to each, each of the individual drivers and they all had different views as to they hadn't achieved what they set out to do. But we were all aware that it, that, that it could happen. You know, in a worst case scenario, you know, we could have come here and the first lap we could have totaled the car. So I suppose we've got unfinished business, but you know, there's obviously an expense to repair the car, get it back, and we, and we, we haven't assessed the damage yet. So we need to get the car, strip it down, find out whether the chassis is repairable or whether we need to rebuild into a new, and that's going to come down to the dollars and time. But it seems there's a general feeling that you know, everybody wants to be involved in another, have another go. And you know, we've made a lot of good contacts up here again this year. Uh, we've had a lot of offers of help, uh, which will assist us probably to get back here and you know, for a few less dollars. And there, so probably I'd say within a month we'll, we'll have a fair assessment. Once the car gets landed in New Zealand, we'll have an assessment of the costs. Uh, we've got to find the checked availability of parts, which will probably have to come out of Japan. And then we'll look at you know, you know, how we're going to put the car back together. But so the car will be going back together again. Um, Richard's obviously you know, extremely disappointed and, and isn't that confident about driving, as most drivers are if they've had a big, a big off. But I, I think the team will probably stay together in the form that it's in and hopefully we'll be back again next year with the same car and a, and a little bit more experience to have another go. And for me it'll be a, the third time and you know, hopefully the third time lucky. And everyone's here to help everybody out. As, as the guys have found, people up here are really friendly, really helpful, uh, generally concerned. I mean, the amount of people that came and saw us to see check that Richard was okay, offers of drives in their car, you know, couldn't have been more helpful. So I think that's all part of it. I think everybody who's involved in sort of a sport gets that feel. Um, and for me, you know, I've always thought, well, I can still drive, reasonably competitive, I'll drive, and sometime in the future I'll have to accept that I'm getting too old for it and I'll probably fall back into a administrative role or, or engineering role um, but at the moment yeah I'm still still interested in driving and still uh, keen on being involved in the car preparation so I'll be putting my effort into getting back here, uh, up here again next year. The enterprise and efforts of these New Zealanders did not go unnoticed. Hill Raceway Park in Willows, California. My name is John Lindsay with the National Autosport Association. I'm here with Trevor Strong from the New Zealand team that came up looking to get here after a huge journey from home, but unfortunately it didn't end well. Trevor, tell me what happened. Oh, well, we were practicing on the second day. I just got out of the car, the car felt really well, and one of our guys just made a driving error, and unfortunately that's motor racing. We ended up, not, we thought we'd end up with just a few deeds in the car to take it home, not a complete wreck. But we'll go home, you know, regroup, and uh, have another focus, because it's like climbing a mountain. You don't give up the first time, you come back and do it again. That's great, so you're telling us there's some unfinished business to be taken care of in 2012. Yeah, one of my ambitions is basically to drive for an hour in the day in a race car and drive for an hour in the night in the race car. And now I want to do it here. You know, um, two or three sessions I go on into the track quite quickly. Um, we had, we had uh, Jonathan Merris was our track buddy, guy that taught us what was going on. And uh, we, we all got quite used to the track quite quickly, so hey, it's a great track, a lot of fun. How does uh, Thunder Hill compare to some of the, the other tracks you've raced at around the world? Um, this is the first time I've been out in New Zealand, and we don't have the hills like you have here. So first time was a bit daunting, but uh, after a couple of times around, you knew where to put the car, and you just let the hill let it happen. And that uh, was great. It was a beautiful track, a lot of fun. Quite technical, but once you got into the, the driving mode and you understood the technicalities of the track, that no, was great. We will look forward to welcoming Trevor and his team back for the 25 Hours of Thunder Hill presented by the National Auto Sport Association in 2012. But the last thing I'd like to say, the, the NASA people, the people we've met up here from New Zealand point of view has been fantastic. You guys have been so friendly, you've made us so welcome, everybody's been concerned about the driver, everyone's concerned and feels sorry for us, and they've come in and, and it's come from the heart, they, they mean it. 
which for us has been fantastic. So we appreciate everything and thank you very much for all your hospitality. It's been great. Absolutely, and it's an honor for us to have you here. Thank you very much. We look forward to next year and a better result. Yeah, we do too. Thanks very much. Right. Well, I probably, I probably would be. we had a lot of aspirations and we put a lot of effort in and um, it's been kind of character building but it didn't go the way that we wanted it to. And um, from my perspective, I'm certainly not I'm, I'm certainly not happy, but having said all that, that's the way of life goes. We've got the opportunity to come back next year if we so desire, and at the moment that's really what I'd like to do. And on the positive side, Richard could have been hurt and could be still in hospital. And to be frank, um, that didn't happen, so that's kind of good. And um, we can do it again, it's only a car. But it was disappointing and we had such hopes. And quite frankly, um, you better come back next year because it's unfinished business and I don't, I personally don't want to leave it alone. Um, I want to have a go. So, here's, here's the next year and I don't know what um, the rest of the guys think, but I don't know what they've said, but quite frankly, they're a good bunch of guys and it's just unfortunate and those, these things happen and you move on, we'll fix the car over the next four or five months and uh, we'll get our act together and um, we'll ship the container probably this year, this time up to Sacramento rather than it would have to be based in LA. So, um, and the good group of guys and support crew that were with us, they've been great. And they, they seem to indicate at the moment that they'd love to join us again. 